Welcome to Miss Pam Reads. Today we are reading Tilly and Mert by Ida Luttrell. Pictures by Doug Cushman. Tilly and Mert. Tilly and Mert by Ida Luttrell. Pictures by Doug Cushman. Oh, it's a chapter book. So we have The Garage Sale on page 7, Sister Alice on 21, and The Store on page 42. But I think the words are big enough. We'll try to read this straight through. All right, here we go. The Garage Sale. Mert Field Mouse was picking plums. Tilly Skunk came running by. Mert, she cried, Weasel is having a garage sale. Let's go. No thanks, said Mert. I know all about Weasel's sales, but this is a good one, Tilly said. She tugged at Mert's arm. Come on. Weasel was sitting by a table covered with old things. Hello, said Weasel. I have lots of bargains for you. Tilly picked up a pink umbrella. Just what I need, she said. Why are you selling this umbrella? Well, it does have a teeny tiny hole in it, said Weasel, but it would cost you twice as much the store. I want it, said Tilly. She paid Weasel for the umbrella. What about this purse? asked Mert. A fine purse, said Weasel. Real plastic, hardly used at all. What is wrong with it? asked Mert. Just a teeny tiny hole, said Weasel. Mert put the purse back. <clears throat> I will take it, said Tilly. She paid Weasel and put her change in her new purse. Oh, look, Mert, said Tilly. I have always wanted a green teapot. My old one is so plain. This is a real treasure, said Weasel. Is anything wrong with it? asked Tilly. Only a teeny tiny hole, said Weasel. A new teapot would be half as good. I will buy it, said Tilly. Tilly paid Weasel for the teapot. She was very pleased. So was Weasel. Tilly and Mert started home. Suddenly, it began to rain. We can use my new umbrella, said Tilly. She opened the umbrella. The rain came down harder. The teeny tiny hole got larger. Soon, Mert and Tilly were very wet. They ran to get out of the rain. Tilly's money slipped out the hole in her new purse. All my money is gone, she cried. When they got to her house, Tilly made some tea in her new green teapot. She set the teapot on the table. A large brown stain grew on her white tablecloth. It grew bigger and bigger. Tilly picked up the teapot. All the tea was gone. Tilly, said Mert, we are cold and tired. Your money is gone. Your teapot won't hold tea. Throw these bargains away. No, said Tilly, and she thought very hard. I will plant a fern in the teapot. I will use the umbrella for a hook. I will hang my purse on the wall. What good is a purse hanging on the wall? asked Mert. It will remind me, said Tilly, never to buy a bargain with a teeny tiny hole in it. Mert laughed. Then she and Tilly made tea in Tilly's plain old teapot. 
it was half the trouble and twice as good. Sister Alice. Mert hurried down the path to Tilly's house. She saw a sign over Tilly's door. The sign said, Sister Alice, palms read and fortunes told. Oh dear, said Mert. Tilly must have moved away. I will see if Sister Alice knows where she went. Mert knocked on the door. Tilly quickly wrapped a towel around her head and put a shawl over her shoulders. She dropped a piece of dry ice into an old round fish bowl and set it upside down on the table. Then Tilly opened the door. Hello, Mert, she said. It's you, said Mert. Where is Sister Alice? I am Sister Alice. Tilly said in a very important voice. You are Tilly Skunk, said Mert. You can't fool me. I am a fortune teller now, said Tilly. Sister Alice is my fortune telling name. Oh, said Mert. Will you tell my fortune? Of course, said Tilly. Step this way. Smoke from the dry ice swirled around inside the upside down bowl. Smoke rise, smoke fall, crystal ball tell all, Tilly chanted. Mert waited. Nothing happened. Tilly stared at the smoking bowl. Then she looked at Mert. You were born on Monday, she guessed. That is right, cried Mert. Tilly smiled. Guessing right was fun. I see good luck in your future. Tilly, Mert said, you are wonderful. Sister Alice, Tilly reminded her. I mean, Sister Alice, said Mert. I will go and tell all my friends. Tilly looked in the mirror. Sister Alice? She said to herself, you will be famous. Mert's friends came to see Tilly. Sister Alice told many fortunes. Pudge Gopher, she said, you will get a gift today. He found a yo-yo in a cereal box. She told old Mr. Mole, I see a trip. I see water. He went to the creek to wash his socks. They told all their friends. Sister Alice became famous. Mert came to see Tilly again. There was a new sign over her door. Sister Alice was written in flashing green lights. Tilly wore a red satin turban and a new silk shawl. Her nose pointed just a little bit toward the sky. Will you read my palm today? Mert asked. Very well, said Tilly. She looked at Mert's palm. Sister Alice does not read sandy palms, she said. Mert laughed. I was digging in my garden. I brought you some turnips. Sister Alice does not eat turnips. Next, said Tilly. Her noise, her noise, her nose pointed higher in the sky. Wait, Sister Alice, said Mert. Do you want to fly kites with me? Sister Alice does not fly kites, Tilly said. Now, her nose pointed straight up. Well, Sister Alice, Mert said, I see that fame has gone to your nose. Goodbye. Tilly told fortunes all that day and the next and the next. She told her customers what they wanted to hear, but the fun was gone. 
something was missing. Mert did not come back. Tilly looked out the window. The trees were twisting in the wind. She thought of Mert and her kite. Then she heard Mert singing on her way to the creek. Tilly threw off her turban and shawl. She ran down the path. Wait, Mert, she cried. Mert stopped. Where is Sister Alice, she asked. Gone, said Tilly. Good, said Mert. And they raced to the creek and jumped in together. <laughs> and I think this is our last chapter, The Store. Tilly and Mert were eating pie. I have been thinking, said Tilly, about how we can get rich. Mert stopped licking her fingers. How? she asked. With a grocery store, said Tilly. Everyone eats. That sounds like fun, Mert said. Let's do it. So Tilly and Mert found just the right place for the store. They had many crates of groceries. I will put things on the shelves. That is what I do best, said Mert. Good, Tilly said. I will work at the desk. I am good at that. Mert put baking powder next to flea powder. She put shampoo beside syrup and jelly beans beside lima beans. Tilly's desk was piled with letters. Wonderful, she said. I love mail. She opened a letter. It said, pay your light bill. How boring, said Tilly. She dropped the letter in the trash. Ooh. She opened another letter. She read, your rent is due. Dull, 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 Tilly said. And she threw it away, too. Pudge Gopher came into the store. Jelly beans, please, he said. These are better for you, Mert said. She gave him a sack of lima beans. Old Mr. Mole came in to buy a can of baking powder. He had left his glasses at home, so he bought a can of flea powder. Weasel rushed in. I'm in a hurry, she said. Quick, where is your shampoo? Over there, said Mert. Weasel grabbed a bottle of syrup, paid, and dashed out. But Weasel, called Mert. Weasel was already gone. The next morning, Mr. Mole came stomping in. Look at my biscuits, he shouted. Your baking powder is no good. Mert sniffed a biscuit. That smells like flea powder, she said. You should have read the label. I want my money back, he yelled. Just then, Pudge came in. Your beans hurt my teeth, he said. Did you cook them, asked Mert. No, he cried. I wanted jelly beans. Weasel stormed in. This terrible shampoo ruined my hair, she screamed. This is not bad shampoo said Mert. It is good syrup. Take time when you shop. Tilly came to see what all the fuss was about. The customer is always right, she said. She gave Mr. Mole a fresh can of baking powder. She gave a sack of jelly beans to Pudge and a bottle of shampoo to Weasel. When they had all left, Tilly said, Mert, you are driving away our customers. Suddenly, the lights went out. We must be having a storm, said Mert. She and Tilly ran to the door. The sun was shining. Did you pay the light bill? Mert cried. If you don't pay the light bill, they turn off the lights. It was too boring, said Tilly. Mert tripped over the trash can in the dark store and all the bills fell out. You don't know one thing about desk work, Tilly, said Mert. We will have to close the store. Well, 
Tilly said. You don't know one thing about sorting groceries or taking care of customers. Now they were both angry. Could you do it better? Tilly and Mert shouted at once. They looked at each other. They started laughing. Let's switch jobs, Tilly said. So Mert paid the bills. She counted the money and took it to the bank. Tilly sorted groceries and helped the customers. She always had jelly beans for Pudge. Tilly and Mert had the best store in town. They did not make lots of money, but they felt very rich. The end. Thank you for joining me for Miss Pam Reads. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll get an update when there's a new story posted. Thanks. Bye.